Firefly guitars are absolutely phenomenal when it comes to the value you're getting for the price. I posted a video a while back on the Firefly Strat, which I paid $149 for, and it was packed full of features. It was amazing, and they sold out, clearly. I've been checking the website every now and again, and I saw this, a baritone, 30 inch scale, roughly the same specs, the same price. So let's go ahead and check this out. Same deal, we get the cable and you get the adjustment wrenches. And then here's the baritone with a 30 inch scale. Here we are. So you get the Jazzmaster style body, completely contoured. It has the standard kind of hard tail strat string through bridge. So it is string through in the back, bolt on neck, 30 inch scale. It actually is quite surprisingly light. I thought it would be kind of heavy and more bass like. A three way switch, two humbuckers, chrome knobs. It's got this really cool black binding all along the neck and the big black block inlays. Has this reverse headstock, which is pretty killer. It's got some pretty low action here as well. I'm really surprised by the action. Stainless steel frets, clearly. Maple neck, skunk stripe on the back. And it does not have locking tuners like my last model. These are just standard tuners. And that makes a lot of sense because locking tuners uh, usually can't accommodate the really thick 90s and 100 gauge strings. Every single locking tuner I've had for thicker gauge strings, I've had to drill through the actual uh, tuner to make the hole bigger. So it makes sense that they wouldn't put locking tuners on this, although you could, you could if you wanted to. So this is what you're getting. It's a pretty incredible deal. So let's go through the specs, all right? The action is so low on this guitar, it's crazy. At least the truss rod is probably cranked a little bit too hard, so it's super flat. So it definitely needs an adjustment out of the box. So I think I do need to raise the saddles, which is Pretty strange, right? We usually have to lower saddles and crank the truss rod. I think I have to do the opposite here. Um, raise these saddles and maybe get, get a little bit of relief on this because, I mean, it's dead flat. I mean, there's like no movement at all. It takes zero pressure to push these strings down. It plays pretty phenomenal. So what I want to do is go through the specs real quick and then we'll plug it in and play it. It has a hardtail strat style Bridge, and this is a string through instrument. Two humbuckers with the chrome covers. Red tortoise shell pickguard. This still has the protective plastic on it that I have to remove. Really nice, heavily knurled chrome knobs, which go really well with this. And then obviously a three way switch. This is a 22 fret stainless steel fret neck. So it's a 30 inch scale has black binding all the way around. It looks really gorgeous, really glossy all the way around, all the way around the heel. And then the big black block acrylic inlays. So stainless steel frets, these are all rounded over. So they're all hot dogged or whatever you want to call it. These are Alnico 5 humbuckers with the chrome covers. And we get a bone nut, obviously. You can see how the black binding does terminate right there at the transition. This is a really gorgeous reverse headstock. So this headstock is actually pretty cool. It's not terrible, but it looks way better when it's in reversed position. So it has two string trees. This is a string through instrument. So you have the string ferrules in the back, standard neck plate. And obviously the Made in China sticker. And then the skunk stripe. 
I would assume the skunk stripe is just rosewood or some darker brown wood. There is the neck headstock transition, firefly sticker, and then you have their branding in the back, designed and backed by whatever that is, LSN, with the serial number. These tuners are your basic overseas tuners, nothing special about them, they still have the protective plastic on them, which I'll have to remove. These have the belly cut in the back, so it's just a standard belly cut, really hard to pick up with the high gloss. And obviously the main attraction here is the 30 inch scale. So you're getting a 30 inch scale baritone for just a remarkable price. It's just insane that you can get something like this, this cheap. So this is an all mahogany body and a Canadian maple neck with a maple fretboard. Just incredible, you can get stainless steel frets with the rounded ball ends. Alnico 5 pickups. Bone nut. 30 inch scale baritone for 169 bucks. $169 is what I paid for this. My own money. So you may not remember, but I actually have a video where I modded guitar fetish standard body into a baritone. And there's no way that my cost came under $169. Now it's true that you can get some Squires and you can get some Gretches and you can get some Harley Bentons, right? They're, everybody's making a baritone these days. And they're not this cheap. And none of them, none of them have stainless steel frets. I doubt any of them have a bone nut. Maybe they have Alnico 5 pickups, I don't know, but this one's got it all. So once again, really impressed with Firefly Guitars and the Guitars Garden website, which sells these. This is the Firefly Baritone. I think the model number is FFJA. It's a slick guitar. So if you were to show me a bass six, you know, with all the weird whammy thing and a weird bridge, you know, bass six has that weird bridge, right? Come on. And everybody has to flip that bridge to make it intonate correctly. We all know this, right? Anyone who's into baritones knows you gotta flip the bridge on a bass six. And it has that weird spring, you know, floating trim. You got tuning issues. And this thing's got, you know, what you'd expect a baritone to have. A proper hardtail bridge that can be intonated, right? We have individual saddles here that can go back and forth and up and down and all that good stuff. And that's what you want. And it, you know, it's awesome that this thing is a slick looking guitar with all the chrome accents, the chrome covers, the chrome knobs. Classic. I mean, this is classy with the white high gloss mahogany body and the red tortoise pickguard. And then of course you have the very, very traditional block inlays on these really extended scale necks. I bought this with my own money. You know, no one's paying me to say any of this stuff. I love guitars. I buy guitars. I have a collection of them and I love cheap guitars. Now, as you know, I build custom guitars. I build very expensive custom guitars. And sometimes when I buy these cheap guitars, I just wonder like, why are we building expensive guitars? I just can't compete with the Chinese. So anyway, let's plug this in. I mean, we've gone through the specs. Let's hear it. I, I do want to do something different. I know everybody wants to do like, some metalcore riffs on these things, and I know I can play metalcore just like anyone else, but I want to do this a little bit differently. I want to use this machine for writing music and songs. So let's try something different. Let's try a different type of demo. We all know it can chug, right? We all know it can chug. I collect guitars. 
I have vintage guitars, expensive guitars, custom guitars, and cheap guitars. And that's what a guitar collection should be. It should be well-rounded. It should represent guitars from all manufacturers and from all over the world. I mean, if you love guitars, why would you say no to something like this? Just because it didn't have the brand name that you're used to seeing, or because it wasn't made in a particular part of the world, it just makes no sense. These cheap guitars are pretty amazing value. You can't debate the value you're getting from these fireflies. But that's not why we buy these cheap guitars, and that's not why we love cheap guitars. We love inexpensive guitars because of the guilt free experience. Because that feeling of dropping $169 and having a blast all afternoon playing, that feeling cannot be beat by a $1,000 guitar. Thanks for watching. Take it easy.